Hi everyone, I'm Jessica, welcome back. Today we are on the second day of our second week of the Nona Quilt Along. This is a very beginner quilt along. We're gonna be making this quilt behind me. I designed it with the first time quilter in mind. And for the first two weeks, we're going over how to make a quilt in general, the supplies and materials you need. So yesterday, we talked about sewing machines a little bit, and today we're gonna to be talking about fabric. There is a ton you can learn about fabric. We're gonna go over the very basics. I would recommend reading the blog post on We All Sews that coordinates with this information because I'm gonna be letting you know about a lot of different types of cuts of fabric, their sizes and everything, but on the blog post, it will break it down for you. You'll see all the sizes, all the numbers, so you can really get a handle on what each thing is. Let's start out with the basics. In general, most often, quilts are made of 100% cotton fabric. Of course, you can make a quilt with anything, so we're not gonna um, limit ourselves to just cotton, but for this purpose, in this beginner fabric video, we're gonna be talking about 100% cotton fabric. Often, it's, re it's referred to as quilter's cotton, and it has a standard size. It usually comes on a bolt, I have one here. Um, the bolts vary in size, and so a fabric store can buy bolts like this and then you can go in and order cuts from each bolt so in general quilting cotton is 43 to 44 inches wide that's this way and actually this is folded in half on the bolt so you're only seeing about 21 22 inches here on this bolt but after you get your piece cut off of it you'll be able to open it up to its full width which is 43 to 44 inches this is one way that you can buy fabric. And if you go into like a big box fabric store, you're gonna see bolts everywhere. If you go into a quilt shop, you're gonna see bolts everywhere. The bolt is there so that you can pick through, pick the ones that you like and put them together yourself into a group of fabrics to use. Uh, you can get, the, the stores will cut off of this bolt for you. Um, each store has their own policy, but uh, often it's starting at about an eighth of a yard and all the way up to however big you want. You'll find that in quilting, we measure fabric in yards. So um, it will always be referred to as yardage or cuts of that, but in terms of yards. So an eighth of a yard, a quarter of a yard, a half of a yard, um, those are the terms that you'll become familiar with. And because of that, quilting patterns are written for the materials in yards too. So a quilting pattern will tell you how much background you need in yards, and then you'll go and get it. Now, quilting patterns often can be very specific. They may say two thirds of a yard, and maybe your fabric shop doesn't cut in third increments, which I, a lot of them do, but you have to ask. Sometimes when you're ordering online, they won't cut those special, but in person, they'll cut almost anything. So um, you would, if, if something like that happens, you would have to round up to whatever increment that they cut at. So if your pattern calls for two thirds of a yard and you can't get it cut by the third, you can go up to three quarters of a yard and you'll have a little bit extra. So um, you'll have to look at your quilt pattern to see how much you need of each. Again, this is referred to as yardage and you'll get this cut as you need at a shop. It comes on a big bolt like this. Often you pull it off the wall or the rack wherever they have it and you'll take it to their cutting counter and tell them how much you need of each one. Another common way that fabrics come for quilters are called pre-cuts. So pre-cuts are just fabric that are already cut for you. Pre-cuts can come from the fabric manufacturer. They each kind of make their own set of pre-cuts that are packaged and then shipped to quilt stores. But also quilt shops can make pre-cuts for you. They can take the bolts and cut them down to certain sizes and bundle them up in groups and call that a pre-cut because you, don't, you aren't doing that cutting um, or even the coordinating of the bundle. So there's a bunch of different common sized pre-cuts that fabric manufacturers make, and we're just gonna go over them quickly. And again, you can reference that blog post. This has all the information typed out. So I'm giving you an overview here just so you can listen to it. But if you need to refer to the text, go to that blog post. The link is in the description here. So this is, a, this is called a jelly roll. 
also called a roly poly, um, two and a half inch strips. There's a variety of names, but basically this is a grouping of fabric and they are cut to two and a half inches wide and they are the width of the fabric. So two and a half inches by 43 to 44 inches. That's what this is. Okay. So this jelly roll has 42 and a half inch strips in it. And, um, so if the collection that is designed by the designer that's showcased here has 40 prints in it, you'll get one of each kind. And if it has less than 40, you'll get duplicates of some. And the duplicates are determined by the manufacturer. You can look up lots of patterns to use these. Often they're called jelly roll quilts. And um, there are books that solely tell you how to use these cuts. In my book, Pre-Cut Parade, we have three jelly roll patterns in there. So you can find lots of things to do with these. These are really handy. Um, actually, all the pre-cuts are. They're made to be handy. They're made to make it easier for you, less cutting, and you can get right to sewing, depending on what you're doing with them. So this is one. Another kind is called a layer cake or a 10 inch square. Um, a 10 inch stacker. These are basically uh, 10 inch squares of fabric. These are prints that are co that are designed by a designer. They are coordinated by color, scale of the design, um, you know, the type of design, whether it be floral dots, stripes, you know, they're coordinated to look really nice together. The layer cake has 42 10 inch squares. And so if the collection has less than 42 prints, you'll have some duplicates and the manufacturer will determine what duplicates you have. But these are really nice because um, each pre-cut has its own, you know, pluses and minuses. So the selling point often of a layer cake is you get a large, like a 10 inch square is pretty big. So if you need to cut larger pieces for a larger block, um, but you wanted to use a pre-cut, this is probably the one you're gonna go to. Get this nice big 10 inch by 10 inch square and you can, um, you know, plan how to cut your pieces from it. A smaller version of layer cake is a five inch square. So these are called charm packs, five inch stackers. Um, you know, there's a variety of names for them, but what they are is the same thing as the layer cake, just smaller. So it's five inch squares instead of 10 inch squares. And you still get 42 cuts. So it'll have 42 five inch squares in here. And if the collection had, the fabric collection has less than 42 prints, then you'll have some duplicates in there also. I would say that probably the quilter's favorite thing is called a fat quarter. Fat quarter bundles can vary widely in, in how many prints are included. This is a fat quarter bundle that was produced by a fabric company here. This one's Moda. And this collection has 40 prints in it. So this fat quarter bundle has one of every single print in that collection. So it has 40 prints. This is kind of the biggest that you're gonna see it. 40 prints is the most. Um, they can be as little as 10, 10 prints or um, even less if they're being packaged by a quilt shop like if a quilt shop is pulling maybe 10 fabrics off of their wall from the bolts and cutting them into fat quarters then they can tie them up and sell them like that fat quarter bundle so the amount of fat quarters in a fat quarter bundle varies widely uh so you'll just have to look if you're looking for a fat quarter bundle um there's a lot of quilt patterns that call for fat quarters and um you'll have to look at the amount that you need and then you'll have to either find a bundle that fits that or mix and match bundles, or you can pick yardage from the wall and have them cut into fat quarters. Now, what is fat quarter? A fat quarter is a piece of fabric that measures 18 by 21 or 22. So what happens is when, um, when you're cutting fabric from a bolt, Again, we always said we're, for, we're 43, 44 inches uh, wide. You can vary the length of this. So um, an eighth of a yard is one measurement. A quarter of a yard is one measurement. So a quarter of a yard is nine inches by 43, 44. Now, nine inches is, is fine. There are lots of patterns that call for quarter of a yard. Um, but sometimes the quarter of a yard are good when you're doing projects that have lots of like long strips. But if you have wider pieces that you need cut, um, you might not need more than a quarter of a yard, but the measurement of that cut, nine inches by 43, 44, uh, might not lend well to what you're, to the pieces that you're cutting out. So 
quilters have another uh, a type of pre-cut called a fat quarter. And what a fat quarter is, it is the same area as a quarter yard, but what you but what it is is a different layout. So it's 18 inches by 21, 22 instead of nine inches by 43, 44. So what they do essentially is they take a half yard, which is 18 inches, and they cut it from the bolt. And then they take that half yard and they cut it in half on the fold. So from one half yard, you get two fat quarters. And those fat quarters then, which is 18 by 21, 22, it's a nice big piece. And if you're not cutting strips and you have larger pieces, you can cut nicely from that fat quarter uh, without having to buy more than you need. So you don't need a half yard. You don't have to buy a half yard. They cut it in half for you. So that is the size of these pieces. Um, and they're very popular because they're really versatile and you can make so many things out of them, um, so many quilt patterns. So that is probably the, I would say, most used, most loved um, size of a pre-cut for a quilter. Another variation to that is a fat eighth. So here I have a fat eighth bundle. It looks just like the fat quarter bundle, but it's smaller. So a fat eighth bundle, these are cut to be nine inches by 21, 22. So it's essentially a fat quarter cut in half. Um, and it's called a fat eighth. So instead of being four and a half inches by 43, 44, which is like a really long kind of skinny-ish strip, um, this is going to be nine inches by 21, 22. So again, um, you might not need, say for this one uh, quilt you're making, you don't need a whole quarter of a yard or even a fat quarter maybe that's too big uh but you don't want a skinny strip a four and a half inch strip so this will give you what you need um in a in a different format and the last bundle i want to mention is bigger than a fat quarter this is a half yard bundle so these are not often, like super often packaged by manufacturers. Um, you can get half yard bundles easily from stores uh, who curate them themselves or, you know, cut them themselves even using the same collection like that a manufacturer would. Um, but this fabric brand, this is Ruby Star, they often have half yard cuts of their fabric. So this would be equivalent of two fat quarters which would be 18 inches by 43, 44. So there is, um, you know, if you want, maybe you wanted to do, you really like this one collection, so you wanted to make a quilt with fat quarters, but you wanted to have extra. Um, you could cut each of these half yards in half, have the fat quarters for your quilt, and have the other fat quarters to save for a later project. So these are out there. Um, they're not as widely packaged by manufacturers as a fat quarter bundle or any of the other ones that I've mentioned, uh, but they are there. And you definitely can have quilt shops easily cut you half yards. And um, if they have a fat quarter bundle, you can probably even say, I like that, but can I have it in a half yard bundle? And if they have all the fabrics, they'll cut it for you. So quilt shops are super helpful in finding the fabrics that you need. One other thing I wanted to mention about pre-cuts, I, I briefly touched on it before. Each bundle, um, Let's, let's just take um, this fat eighth bundle, for example. This fat eighth bundle was designed by a fabric designer. This particular one was designed by Bonnie and Camille. So they designed each of these prints and they decided on the scale of the prints, the type of the prints, the colors. They made this as beautiful as they could, right? So this is ready to go, ready to be used in a quilt. Sometimes in the beginning of when you're starting out, you might struggle putting fabrics together. So if you walk into a fabric store, you might be like, wow, I'm so overwhelmed by all these bolts on the wall. How do I even pull these together into a quilt? I, I don't even know what ones to pick. That's one another reason pre-cuts are nice. Until you hone in on what you love um, and how you can mix and match prints to your likeness, uh, fabric collections are a great place to start they are already ready for you to use. They intentionally put in some, you know, some diagonal, some like a bias diagonal, some text, some florals, some, uh, you know, little, little, um, like this one with the little dots. They intentionally added all these different design elements and different sizes and scales and proportions so that when you made a quote with this, it will be beautiful.
So if you're struggling with picking out your own fabrics, I would recommend using pre-cuts in the beginning. The more you make your quilts, even if it's all pre-cuts, the more quilts you make with pre-cuts, the more you'll be able to hone in on your specific style. Uh, so when I first started quilting, like all I used was pre-cuts. Uh, I loved them because they're so beautiful. And like I said, they're just made to work together. Like this is just, these ones are just made to look beautiful together, all these colors. And they do. Um, but as you quilt, as you keep making and making and making, you think, hmm, all right, well, I'm going to use this pre-cut bundle, but I'm going to add in a couple other ones that I have too. Maybe you decide you want to add another color in with these, or maybe you decide you know, I like these reds, but I have this other one that will really work with this bundle too. I'm going to stick my red in. So it starts out slow. It starts out to you as you like adding fabrics to a bundle that's already built. And then that will morph into, okay, I'm going to go in and pick out my own fabrics for this quilt. I know, I know exactly what I'm looking for and I'm going to find it. And then you'll pull a bunch off the shelves. You'll like put them next to each other. That's sometimes called auditioning fabric. You'll put them next to each other and see what works. And, you know, you might change your mind. You might coordinate a really nice bundle of 20 fat quarters and then come home and say, I'm going to pull out this one and I'm going to substitute in this other one instead. So it takes a while to like hone in onto your style. But in the meantime, these bundles, these pre-cuts, they work beautifully and they take the guesswork out of it for you. One other thing I want to mention. So um, for the backs of quilts, often called backing. Depending on the size of your quilt, um, backing's standard cotton back uh, fabric is not usually wide enough for a quilt back, right? Because we said it was 43 to 44 inches wide. So that means if you're making a quilt that is less wide than that, you can just use one cut. If you're making a quilt that has a bigger backing than that, you have to sew cuts together. Um, so here we are going to piece a backing. That's what that's called when you sew backing pieces together. It's called piecing your backing. We are going to do that in this project. Um, I thought it was a good thing to cover because you need to do that with a lot of quilts. They do make a couple different sizes of cotton though. Um, you can find, it's called wide back and it's 108 inches wide. So if you're making like a really big quilt, a queen size quilt or, or a little bit bigger even, um, that's really nice because you can buy however many yards you need and it'll be 108 inches wide and you won't have to piece your backing. There will be no seams in it. So that is an option. Um, here, we don't need something that wide because our quilt is like 50, you know, a little less than 51 inches wide. So we will need to piece our backing, but we won't need something as big as a wide back, which is 108 inches. So there are other options. Sometimes you can find fabrics that are 54 to 60 inches wide. I would I would venture to say that the ones that are that range of size, 54 to 60, they're not usually cotton, um, but perhaps you can find some and that would work too. So just keep in mind, backings can be different widths. They can be regular cottons, just like I have um, this white bolt. This could be a backing. Anything could be a backing. Um, if it's just not the right size for your quilts, you have to piece it together to make it the right size. As far as where to buy these fabrics, um, what I would do is I would do a search in your area and see if you have any local quilt shops. Quilt shops are gems uh the people who work there are wonderful and helpful and they want to help you find everything you need for your project they have great suggestions and they're always uh, willing to go out of their way to help you however they need so at first i would search for that if there is none in your area the next thing i would say is to go online i personally have to buy all of my fabric online i don't have any local quilt shops uh, so I do all of my shopping online and while it's difficult in the beginning because you can't see the actual colors and everything um, You get used to it. So my favorite place to buy fabric online. I have two um, first one is Etsy and on Etsy uh, I just type in the type of fabric that I'm looking for and it'll pop up a bunch You can pick a shop and pick one that has really good reviews sometimes they have the star seller by them five star rating and they're really great and helpful too. If you wanted them to pull you a special bundle, you can message them and they'll help you. If you say, for example, I'm looking for, I want to buy this charm pack that we're going to use like for the Nona. Can you help me find um, 
prints that coordinate with this so I could use them in my blocks and they will help you. So they're more than willing to help you find exactly what you need. So again, Etsy.com, love it. The other place that I love to buy fabric is Fat Quarter Shop. Uh, so that's a website, fatquartershop.com. They have an amazing selection of all of the newest fabrics from all the fabric manufacturers and they're fantastic. They have great customer service. Um, it's a little bit bigger of an operation than one person running an Etsy shop. So while you could message the owner of the Etsy shop and say, can you help me pull this? Um, you can't really do that at Fat Quarter Shop because it's a whole huge website. But um, they coordinate their own bundles and um, they have a fantastic selection. So those are my two favorite go-to places. I have a bunch of shops on Etsy. I'll put a couple below um, that are my absolute favorite. But if you go on there and you find a shop that has really good ratings and reviews, um, I don't think you can go wrong because Etsy has... Um, you know, 100% protection where if you buy something from a shop and they, you know, don't send it to you or, or whatever happens, uh, they stand by those purchases. And I have bought um, a bundle once or twice from a shop that I thought was a really good price, so I would buy it. And then th they never sent it. They weren't even real shops. Um, but Etsy did refund that. So I have 100% confidence in shopping on Etsy. I love it. If none of those worked for you, you could also go to a big box fabric shop like Joanne Fabrics. The quality of the fabric there is not as high as the quality of, you know, say this fabric coming from a specific fabric manufacturer. Like these are really high quality quilting cottons. They will last and stand up. They can feel them. They're thick and they're beautiful. Um, I have made quilts with fabric from Joanne Fabrics, but it is not as thick and beautiful. Um, they do have a wide selection of prints and you can watch for sales to get a good deal. Um, so whatever you know whatever price range works for you start there if you're going to join fabrics because you have a really good coupon and they're having a sale um, and that's what you can do do that and if you uh, have the resources to invest in really beautiful fabric from fabric manufacturers i'd recommend doing that because the higher quality materials that you use in your quilt um, the higher quality quilt you get at the end the more it lasts the better it holds up to washing and use so um, you know, buy the best quality materials you can, but if you can't buy the highest quality material, don't let that be a barrier to starting. Just use what you can and start where you are. So if, if you have to, um, even if you have to use, uh, thrifted fabric, that would be fine. Or, um, you can see a lot of people make quilts from clothes. If you, um, go to a thrift store or something and get a bunch of flannels, you can cut that up and use it. Um, flannel is a little bit, especially shirting. It's a little bit different than a hundred percent quilt or cotton, but you could definitely make it work. So don't let, um, you know, your budget deter you from starting to quilt. You can quilt on any budget. You just might have to alter the things that you're buying. Um, and fabric is a good place to start because it's the most costly part of your quilt. So for the Nona quilt, we're gonna be using a mixture of pre-cuts and yardage. I did make this sample as like a patriotic red, white, and blue one, but when we're doing this quilt along, I'm gonna be using d a different fabric, which is actually the way that it's written in the pattern. So the one we're making together, it's gonna be the same as the colors listed in the pattern. The fabric that we need for the Nona quilt, you're gonna need one pack of five inch squares. This one I'm gonna be using is Prairie. This is by Lori Holt. It's a Riley Blake Designs fabric um, collection. And so I'm gonna be using this one. Again, that's gonna make these middle sections. So it's gonna be nice to have a whole bunch of a variety of colors to go in there that's gonna look pretty. The next thing we need for what I have here is these blue portions. You're gonna need seven eighths of a yard of a, of whatever color you choose. So you'll basically take your, your uh, charm pack here, you'll look through it and you'll see, do I wanna use one of these colors as that part? Um, I chose one that was used in here. So what I did was on the back of this one, it's gonna show you every print in this packet. So I chose this one to be um, where the blue is in his quilt. So I have that here. And if you can't get this cut to seven eighths of a yard, if you're not in person at a store um, and you're ordering it online, one yard is what you're gonna look for. So this is the color that I'm gonna be using in place of the blue here. So, so far we have these two. 
Then we're gonna need another color for um, these red spots. So that will be 3 eighths of a yard. And if you can't get it cut to the eighth of a yard, you can get a uh, half of a yard. And I just I decided to use this pink for that. I thought that would look really nice. Now, um, there are no solids in this pack, but this color coordinates really nicely with all the pinks in the pack, so I thought it would look pretty. So, so far I have these cuts, and the um, exact cut of each fabric that you need for this quilt is in the pattern. So you'll refer to the blog post on We All Sew, and there's a link there to the actual PDF pattern that you can download, and um, we're gonna work through this whole pattern as we go. But right now we're under the materials section, and I'm showing you everything that I have picked out for the quilt. The next thing that we need is the binding fabric. And again, this is a fabric that will finish all the layers around. Here I have it as a blue. Um, I chose this color, which is not actually one of the ones included in this packet, uh, but it coordinates really nicely. These colors go nice together. So I chose that. And we need a half of a yard of that. And then for the background fabric, which here I used white, and I'm going to use white again, uh, but you could totally do this opposite if you wanted. You could use a darker color in place of white and a lighter color where all the other things are. I mean, there's so many, so many options. So I have my white fabric, and this is one and seven eighths of a yard. So um, one whole yard plus seven eighths more. And if you can't get it cut to that, you can order two yards and that will be just fine. So I have my white. And then for my backing, um, if you're having a standard width backing, which is 43 to four inches wide, you need three and three quarters of a yard of your backing fabric. I chose this one. Uh, it's gonna look really pretty, I think, with all of the colors. So let me try to just hold up my um I kind of try to put all the stuff next to each other and make sure that I like how they look and um I do so this is what I'm using so this is actually what the pattern is written for if you look at the cover the picture on the cover of the pattern it's using uh, this prairie five inch stacker now I've told you everything um I think a beginner needs to know about fabric and I've showed you the materials that we need specifically for the Nona quilt uh, if you have any questions on this leave them in the comments below and I will be sure to answer you and again um you can refer to the blog post on we also whenever you want any details there's some handy charts on there that show sizes um, they tell the difference between each of the pre-cuts and you can always reference that whenever you'd like so thank you for following along and I will see you back here tomorrow and we're gonna be talking about batting see you then